first of all, I, in the previous video, I talked about what that means, what is completing the square. And now we're going to get into one of the reasons why you have to know it in algebra. And that's solving quadratic equations. Now let's do a little bit of a review. And that is that um, what the goal is, is to find the third term in a perfect square trinomial. Sometimes in an equation or some other situation, you're missing that third term. So you have to figure out how much it has to be. You're going to add that amount, that mystery number in there. Now the rule here in green, which is I'm going to keep coming back to over and over, is you look at that middle term and you take half of it and square it. And that's where we get the third term. Okay, So half the uh, middle term and then you square it. That's a good rule to remember. So I have two examples for you to look at. The first one says x squared plus 4x and I left a blank here because we have to complete the square right there and there's a 6 on the other side. Now remember the goal is to try to come up with a number right here in this missing area so that this part is a perfect square trinomial. So the rule is, look at that 4 there, take half of it and then you're going to square it, right? So obviously that has to be another 4. Now the idea is that if we're going to add 4, we have to subtract 4 if it's on the same side of the equal sign, all right? Because the end result is we are adding 0 to the equation. We don't want to change the equation. We just want to uh, change the way it looks. So if you're going to complete the square and add a number to the same side of the equal sign, make sure it's the opposite. All right, The 4 there makes my trinomial possible, but don't forget to subtract 4 on the same side. Now down here is an example of what you do on both sides of the equal sign. So we have x squared minus 10x, and I left a blank spot there because we want to complete the square. Well, half of negative 10 is negative 5, and then we are going to square that which of course is positive 25. So positive 25 goes there. Now in some cases, if you need to add a number on one side of the equal sign, you have to add the same number on the other side of the equal sign. So this is an example of where I add a positive 25 on both sides. Okay, Up here, I would had to add an opposite because I did it on the same side of the equal sign. All right, now that's a very key point there, and we'll try to remember that as we look at some other examples. Now, my first example, number five here, is I'm going to be solving that equation by completing the square. Now, first of all, I want to get this 15 over to the other side, so I'm going to go ahead and subtract 15 on each side, and then I'm going to leave a space over here so that I can complete the square. p squared minus 16p Okay, leave a space there, and then I have a negative 15 over on this other side. Now, to make this a perfect square trinomial, I'm going to take half of negative 16, which is negative 8, and then I'm going to square it. So I'm going to add 64 to that side, and I add 64 to the other side of the equal sign. Okay, very important that those are the same sign on opposite sides of the equal sign. Alright, so now when I factor this and I rewrite it as a squared binomial, it's going to be p minus 8 quantity squared equals, now let's figure out what that is. Yep, it's 49, and now I have to take the square root of each side. So p minus 8 equals plus or minus 7. Remember that I could have uh, both signs possible there for that square root. Now I need to get p by itself, so the last step is to add 8. Now I'm going to get two answers possible. So positive 7 plus 8 is positive 15. And the other possibility is negative 7 plus 8, which would be a positive 1. So p could be a 15 or a 1. Number six, let me work through the steps with you here. We're going to get the 16 over to the other side, so we're going to subtract it. Then I'm going to leave some space for my trinomial. 
Now I look at my negative 10k, I take half of it, which is negative 5, just ignore the k there, and negative 5 squared is positive 25. Again, the rule is half squared. So if I add 25 on the left, I need to make sure I remember to add 25 on the right. So when I factor this perfect square trinomial, I should get k minus 5. Okay, don't forget the minus sign there. Take the square root of each side. k minus 5 equals plus and minus 3 from that square root. Now, of course, my last step would be to add 5 to each side. All right, what are our two answers for k? Well, the first case would be a positive 3 plus 5, so that would be 8. And the other would be negative 3 plus 5, which would be a positive 2. So k could be an 8 or a 2, two possible answers there. All right, look for the very next video in this series, which is our problem set, our first problem set. And you're going to be solving these four equations by completing the square. Thanks for watching.